A while back I posted a video showing how to control 8x8 dot matrix without any additional drivers and libraries. I created few sketches, one for lighting all LEDs of the matrix one by one, one for displaying the simple bitmap and one for scrolling the sample text. Generally I had some fun with multiplexing. I promised a follow-up video which would show how to control those matrices with Max 7219 driver and here it is. For this project we will be using this type of module. It contains MAX7219 chip. Here you can see dedicated 16 pins to plug in the matrix. The matrix we need is a common cathode one. You can also get kits where you have to solder components together. The kit contains more compacted PCB with the chip, matrix itself and then few header pins for matrix and Arduino connectivity. We have three components to connect, Arduino Nano, MAX7219 module and the matrix. When plugging in the matrix, pay attention to the inscription on the side of the matrix. The MAX7219 module gets rid of confusing pinouts of the matrix, so from our code we can address 8 rows and 8 columns in proper order. To connect the module to Arduino we have to first connect VCC and ground. Then we have three pins that will be used for SPI serial interface. Load pin is connected to Arduino digital pin 7. Data in pin is connected to digital pin 11. And clock pin is connected to digital pin 13. Now let's look at the code. To start, we are not going to use any library dedicated for the use with MAX7219 module. We'll use just SPI library. This library allows you to communicate with SPI devices with the Arduino as master device. Next, we declare the load pin. Here is the custom function to control the entire row of LEDs in the matrix. We pass the address of the row we want to control as function input. The way it works is to set load pin to low, indicating that we will be inputting data. Then we send 8 bits of data, each bit representing an LED in that row. And then sending high signal to load pin to finish transfer and display transmitted data. Here is the list of available addresses taken from MAX7219 datasheet. I will try to break it down for you, providing decimal values. Address 0 is not used. Then we have addresses 9 to 12 which represent control registers. They need to be set before we can start working with the module. They control the way data is decoded, LED intensity, whether we control all 64 LEDs or less. We also can put module in the standby mode. The 16th address allows us to perform the test of litting all 64 LEDs. Addresses 1 to 8 are addresses of individual rows. In a setup function, we configure load pin as output, define the bit order for data transfer and start the serial interface. Then we run the test to see if all LEDs lit properly and turn them off when done. After the test, we set four remaining control registers. Let's look at the few examples. Here is the matrix and here is the custom function send data that we'll be using. We want to lit third LED in first row, just to remind that both rows and columns are indexed from 1 to 8. So here is the command we need. Here is the command to lit fifth LED in third row. Now for something more complicated. We want to display the entire bitmap. We capture bits of all the rows in the array declared in the code. And then, in a for loop, we execute send data function eight times to output each row of the bitmap. Now let's look at using dedicated library for working with MAX7219 module. There are a bunch of them available on the internet. I picked LED control one. As usual, you need to find it in GitHub and download the zip file. Then you go to Arduino IDE and install that zip file. 
The library comes with few sample test files. Let's fast track through one of them. Let's look at the code and program the same actions we did using the SPI library. We start with declaring LED control library. Then we declare load, data in and clock pins. And with them we also declare max7219 module. In setup function we run commands that are equivalent of register controls that we used in SPI example activating the module and setting the LED intensity. We also have command to clear the display. There is a difference in indexing the LEDs in the matrix. Here we index them from 0 to 7. Let's look at the two key commands. Set LED command lets a single LED in a given coordinates. Here are the input values. ADDR is the address of the matrix. If you use just one matrix, the value is 0. But if we stack several modules together, then the value may be different. Then we have row and column coordinates of the LED and finally state we want to set it to. Second command is set row and it is similar to send data function from the SPI example. The input is the matrix address, row number and finally the byte we want to transfer. Here is the command to turn on the third LED in first row and then fifth LED in third row. And here is the way to display Apple bitmap. So is it worth to use LED control library? By all means, yes. Here are the main advantages. The code is more tidy. You do not have to send low and high signals to load pin to initiate the transfer. You have useful commands like clear the display. Set LED command is a major advantage. We did not have it when using the SPI library and it would require some additional coding. And finally, the address of the matrix would come useful when connecting multiple matrices. I will do the separate video on the topic. One of the objectives of this video was to compare the results with the results we got when controlling the matrix without any driver and libraries. We had three benchmark sketches displaying all LEDs one by one displaying the bitmap and scrolling sample text. We already displayed the Apple bitmap, but let's do it again, this time with the same bitmap we used in the previous video. All LEDs are nice and bright. I'm using the diffusion panel from last video to better show the result. To display all LEDs one by one, we have two for loops that go through all eight columns and eight rows and lit each LED with set LED command. Wait for 100 milliseconds and turn that LED off. Here is the result. And finally, let's look at scrolling the text. We have the bit layout of the scroll text in the declared array and we are displaying 64 bits from that table at a time. We have variable position which indicates which particular 64 bits in that table are being displayed. After the LEDs are displayed, we increase position by 1 and this way we achieve scrolling effect. With this additional formula, whenever we reach the end of the array, we smoothly transition to displaying the content of the table from the beginning. Looks great! Now let's conclude this comparison. The result of displaying all LEDs one by one is the same. And they seem equally bright. With the displaying of the bitmap you see major difference. While with MAX7219 all LEDs are nice and evenly bright, it is not the case with matrix controlled without any driver. For text scrolling I would expect the result would be the same. 
The brightness of LEDs depends on how many LEDs are lit in each column. Max 7219 somehow resolves that issue, giving us the same brightness of all LEDs. They do not look like they are being multiplexed at all. So if you ask yourself a question, should I use the driver to control the 8x8 matrix? The answer is yes. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe. If you are the first time viewer, ring the bell to get notified when my new videos come out. Give this movie a thumbs up. Each video like this takes a lot of effort and time to make. So if you found it useful and want to support me in making more similar tutorials like this, you can do it through PayPal or Patreon site. Hope to see you next time.